for his, uh, his son who attended school. So I've known Mr. Hope oh, probably since 1990 or so, so a long time. And Nick and I, as he mentioned, we grew up in Pleasant Green and Sherry Baptist Church together. And he's a very effective leader himself. He runs our, uh, he and his wife run our video and, uh, uh, and I put term, technology ministry. So uh, the, the sound systems, the recording, all that kind of thing. So in order to make sure that you're awake, I like you to do something. Okay. All right. All right, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. How yes, many of you like to sing? Yes, How many of you are good singers? Hmm. Well, I'm a bad singer, so you're gonna have to help me out. When I was a kid, we used to sing this song called "My Bonnie Lies Over the Ocean." Have you ever heard that song before? Yes, sir. You heard it? Who heard it? Me. You just sing it. Right? Can, can you sing some of it for me? <laughs> So it basically goes, my body lies over the ocean. Never heard this song? No. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my body to me. Never heard that song? All right, so the words are, my body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my body to me. Got that? Yeah. Yeah. Can we try it one time? My body lies over the ocean. My body lies over the sea. My body lies over the ocean. Oh, bring back my body to me. That's very good. So this is what I want you to do. So you have to you have to listen. Pay attention. So I want you what I want you to do is for every word that begins with the letter B. Every word that begins with the letter B, I want you to stand up and sit down. Wait, All right. So anyone who's singing this song, when we come to a word that begins with the letter B, I want you to stand up and sit down. All right? You got it? Let's try it. My body lies over the ocean. Very good. You got it. So are we ready? All right. You ready? Are you ready? Activities and through your interactions with the staff, 
and volunteers, uh, those things become part of what makes you uh, a great person. And so our goal is to make sure that all young people experience academic success, live a healthy lifestyle, and have good character and substitution. I think with those things in your life, you're going to be successful, right? So kids learn how to work hard, uh, they learn how to get along well with others, and they learn about responsibility. So that's kind of what the club is all about. Someone had a question. You had a question? Yeah, you your hand. Oh, I really want to hear that. Club? Yeah. Great. It's good to see you. You're not there for summer camp? Tell she you here. to talk to you a little bit about how technology uh, is being used in the work that I do. And uh, if you notice, I don't wear a watch anymore because um, between the clock in my car, the clock on my phone, and the clock on my computer, I really don't need a watch anymore. So that's, you know, technology has changed almost every aspect of how clubs or organizations operate. And we're what's called a nonprofit organization nonprofit organization, which means we do not have shareholders. People that pay to help the club operate don't get money in return. And by that I mean if you work for Procter & Gamble, or if you work for General Motors, or if you work for even Target stores, or Schnucks. Well, not Schnucks is a property company. But those people are in business to make money. They're in business to make a profit. And that profit, in turn, goes in their pocket, or they use it to spend. Uh, and the more profit they make, the wealthier they become. In a nonprofit organization, the money that we get is used to deliver programs and services. And the money that's left over is reinvested in the organization so we can continue to fund our programs and services. So how much do you think it costs to serve a child at the Boys and Girls Club? I would say $100, maybe $200. A year? A week? A month? Probably oh, $200 a week. That's a really good job. How'd you know that? I used to go to the boys and girls sometimes, and all the stuff that they had, that was not cheap. It's not cheap, right? But it would be a lot more than that if we didn't have the donors that we have. So it costs us roughly $1,800, $2,000 a year to serve a young person. Our membership fee is $25 a year. And in some instances, we have a sliding scale because we get some support from the government that helps pay that cost. So in order for us to really do what we do, we have to have a lot more money. And we go out and we fundraise. One of the ways that we fundraise is by writing applications or proposals to corporations and to foundations uh, in order to generate the money that's necessary. Uh, that requires technology, either a computer to write that on, or a lot of companies now have gone to what's called an online application online application. So instead of us typing something, printing out on the paper, and mailing it to them, or emailing it to them, we go to their website, and there's a form there, and we just answer the questions on the form. And there's a deadline associated with it. So if you miss the deadline, you can't even bring that form up. So you know how your teachers tell you to turn things on on time? And if you don't get them turned in on time, sometimes they might go hard to break that. Well, if we don't get them in on time, there's no way that we get so it sort of trans it transformed how we apply for money. Instead of sitting down and typing stuff and reading through a proposal, we answer their questions online, then the proposal gets downloaded by them, and they make a decision as to what happens. So that's one way that's changed us. Also, we track all of our donors using technology. We have what's called a donor management software. Everybody knows what software is, right? Yes, sir. Software. What is software? Yes, sir. Software is what is used to help run a certain program. Any other technicians? Uh, programs on the computer. Programs on the computer, all right. So imagine if you had a thousand dollars and you didn't have software to track that with. That'd be a whole lot of index cards, a whole lot of pieces of paper. That's the way organizations use software. Now we can put all that in a single program, and that allows us to track who gave us money, how much money they gave us, how much money they gave us, and what that money's done to do right? So when it's time for us to report back to them, we push a couple of buttons and it spits out a report. Right? 
before we have to get everybody together, talk about what happened, and type up a report, and submit it to us. The other thing it allows us to do, this is really important, is to track how often the donor gives to us. So if you gave us $5 this year, if you didn't give us $5, uh, or if you gave us $5 last year, if you didn't give us $5 this year, we can look at that report and generate uh, a list of people who gave before but didn't give again. So the way I determine whether or not my fundraising people are successful is by tracking what's called donor retention. Who knows what the word retention is? Retention. Yes, sir. Um, to hold back. To hold back. Okay. Oh, uh, restart. To restart. Say hold back or restart. Okay. Do it again. Do it again. Okay. Same thing. Yeah, it means to keep, to hold, you know, not to let it go. All right. So. Donor retention means that we're holding on to that donor. Not only did they give us money last year, but they're going to give us money this year. Right? If they don't give us money this year, then I've got to go out and find somebody else to replace that donor. So it's a lot, it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper for me to retain a donor than it is to get a new donor. And the software helps us to find out who those people are. We can track to see how much their giving has changed. You know, if they start out at $5, maybe they're, maybe they're giving us $100. And we can track that and report it and give that to a committee who can then go out and help us raise some money. So it becomes very effective for fundraising. Without fundraising, we cannot fulfill our mission. Right? People say no money, no mission. Uh, our membership. So when you come to the club, so your name, young lady? Your name? Indigo. Indigo. Oh, Indigo. Okay. When you come to the club, what do you do when you check in? So she mentioned a card. It's a membership card. It has your picture on it. Yes. And what's, what's on the bottom? Oh. A barcode, right? Okay. So there's a scanner that sits on the desk. She walks in with her ID and places it in front of the scanner. The scanner reads that and it records her as being present at the club that day. So I can tell you how many days Indigo came to the club last school year. I can tell you what day she missed. I can tell you how long she stayed there. I can tell you whether she comes more on Mondays or less on Fridays. And what that information does is it lets us go back and look at what programs we offer. And if we have higher attendance on some days, we might have to change what we do in order to retain those members, just like the donors, in order to keep them coming. It's important that you come as many times as you can because in order for us to be effective, in order for us to have the impact that we want to have, we need the children to be there day after day after day. Imagine what would happen if you didn't eat every day. It wouldn't be very healthy. So again, the, 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 the more you, well not the more you eat, but the, the more consistently you eat the right thing, the healthier you become, right? So just like at the club, the more you come and participate in the, in the programs that we offer, uh, the, the healthier you become emotionally, psychologically, you know, physically, and all that stuff, intellectually. So we're able to track her participation. And then we report that information to a donor. We can say we have 5,000 members, our average daily attendance is 500 children. Uh, those children come, they stay an average of three hours every time they come. And that kind of information helps us to build our case for funding. Okay, you know what build our case means? It, helps, it gives us justification for asking for support. So membership track. So she'll do that at the front desk and then when she leaves, sometimes she'll scan again or they'll check you out, right? So we can track how, how many times she, she came. And also, we can look at that software to see who did not renew their membership. Because your membership is, is good for 12 months, right? Right. Good for 12 months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just looking at that. Yeah. Good for 12 months. It's good for 12 months. And when it expires, that means you've got to renew your, you know, you've got to pay a membership fee again. So if it expires, she comes in and scans, it tells the person at the front desk that her membership has expired. Otherwise, because people can come forever and uh, not necessarily have to worry about it. So it's a very helpful tool. That software becomes a very helpful tool. Uh, our organization, as I mentioned, has to raise money, and we have to track that money. How many of you have bank accounts? Do you have a bank account? Is it a savings account or a checking account? Savings. Okay. How, how do you know how much is in there? You can go, and I don't know. I just get a bank. Boy, and then my mom used to tell me. Okay. So she, she used to take money out of my bank account. Oh, for herself. Like it's payday. 
So, you know, without the ability to track that, we don't know if you got $0 or $100, right? I could be broke right now. could be broke right now. So, what if you were broke right now and the bill came that you had to pay? Let's assume you were paying for the car tax. Hey. No, that's not what you're saying. They're going to take my car. They're going to take your car. Exactly. Exactly. So, if we don't know how much money we have in on any given day, if we don't know how much money we have in our account, we can't pay our bills. We can't pay staff salaries. We can't keep the lights on, all right? We can't uh, do all the things. We can't keep the water running, pay the electricity, all that stuff. So we have a, a finance department that's responsible for tracking all of our revenue and our expenses. So the, the resource development department raises the money. The finance department tracks our spending of that money. And so if we get to the point where some, you know, our money's not there, and we've got a bill to pay, we're in trouble. So nobody's going to work for a company if they don't get paid. Well, you can do that if you call a volunteer today. So we have to be able to report that. And not only do we have to be able to track it, we've got to let people know how we spend our money, right? That we meet our goals and objectives. And our, our software uh, allows us to do that. So we've talked about our software in terms of our resource development, tracking donors and income, uh, the finance department and paying our bills and, and keeping track of how well we're doing, how healthy our organization is financially. And we talked about it in terms of tracking uh, membership. We also use technology for marketing. Now, everybody's seen a website before, right? Right. All right, what's your favorite website? YouTube. YouTube. Okay. And what do y'all go to YouTube? So you go there to, to learn, to see, to be entertained, all right? So you would consider that a helpful, a, a helpful uh, piece of software. It's a good place to go, right? So if we want to tell people about the Boys and Girls Club, we market that information on our web page. So if you go to bgcstl.org, it'll take you to our website, it'll tell you where all our locations are, it'll tell you what our fees are, it'll tell you what our programs are, it'll give you highlights some, some of the things that we just done, that we just done. It'll tell you about our youth of the year and, and uh, some other activities like that. You know what the youth of the year is? Um, I don't know exactly what it is, but So we have a young lady named Alex, who just graduated, you know Alex? Yeah, she just graduated from Lindbergh High School, had a 3.6 grade point average, uh, lived with, lives with her mom and three younger sisters, uh, but she lives closer to the Shaw High School, she's part of our third transfer program, and applied for the Youth of the Year program. So she had to write essays, she had to give a speech, uh, she had to turn her grades, she had to talk about her community service, all those kinds of things, and she had to do it in front of a panel of people, and they decided to leave. And because of that recognition, uh, she just recently earned a full scholarship to Southern Illinois University of Carbondale. She got another uh, $500 scholarship from John Longhorn Chevrolet. She got another $1,000 uh, scholarship from us, and she's getting a, just got a new computer to take to a laptop computer to take to school with her this year. So when you apply yourself in your school setting, as Mr. Hope mentioned, when you work hard and do the right things, there are some benefits, there's some payoffs uh, for that that can help you. But it's up to you. Only you can determine how hard you're going to work. So then we use uh, so software for marketing. Uh, how many of you know what an email blast is? An email blast. I don't know what it is, but it sounds like you just get a wave of emails from a bunch of different people. Okay. That's one way of putting it. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, let's say, yeah, you want to try? Um, Sometimes when you open emails, that allows spam. So come in if you're on the right hand to control it. Well, I guess I got to guess, like a gang of emails that keep popping up, and you got to answer all of them? Uh, that's one way. It is a gang of emails, but it's a, it's a specific email to tell a certain message, message to a group of people. So, uh, like I have a, um, a group, an email group. It could be people at my church, it could be people I work with, it could be our board of directors. There's certain information I want them to get. So I'll create uh, a document, I'll create a flyer, or I'll create, uh, 
usually something creative and colorful that'll get your attention. And I'll email it, I'll blast that out to everybody I know or everybody I want to know about the information I'm trying to share. Okay. So like a share? Yeah. Kind of like a share file? Yeah. So share file is, you know, probably beyond me here. In, in our case, the share file is where different people in our organization can go to the same place and get information. That's in this case, you know, that's kind of passive. You know, that requires you to go to the file and get the information. In this case, I'm taking the information and I'm sending it to you. Right. So for example, um, we have, um, when we're registered for summer camp, or when our youth of the year was selected, we put a little story together, put a picture on there, and we send it out to all of our donors. Because the money they give us, they give us, helps support our youth of the year program. So we want them to know what that money was paying for. All right. So if you're going to have a party, you have a party. Yeah. say you have a birthday party, and what you used to do is you know you would mail out invitations, right? Mm -hmm. So basically, in some instances, an email blast is an invitation. You're inviting people to come and participate. A good friend of mine uh, is having a concert on Sunday. There was a singer by the name of uh, Donnie Hathaway, who's from St. Louis. You know, you, you may have heard of his daughter, Layla Hathaway. You've heard of her? Am I that old? You've heard the name before? Yeah, she just sang on the gospel, the BET gospel thing. Okay. Well, uh, this young man is having a concert. So, you know, everybody, look at his Facebook page. Alright, so you know how stuff gets based on, posted on your Facebook page, like an event or something, people mm -hmm. invite you or something. So it's like taking that message and, and sending it out to people. So he, he wants people to come to this concert to see him say, so he sent out an email blast. So either he can put together a flyer for himself, or he can put on his Facebook page, and because I'm his friend on Facebook, I'll get the message saying, you know, uh, he's inviting me to something, so I can get it on my Facebook page and can see it. Right, so email blasts are very helpful, because now I don't have to call, I don't have to get on the phone and call other people. I can just you know, put it together, hit a button, and send it out to as many people as I want. And the other good thing about it is that they can take that and they can forward it to their friends. Right. Okay, so they can pass it on. Pass it on, exactly. There you go. All right, so instead of me calling my friends, those friends calling their friends and you know, dialing one number after the other, it's like being able to call 100 people, 1,000 people, or 10,000 people at one time. And a lot of people use that. We use it at the club. Uh, I get an email blast from Lowe's Home Improvement, Lowe's Stores, or Men's Warehouse, or uh, uh, Sports Authority. I get email blasts from them all the time that tell me about their sales, you know, discounts on shoes or, or that sort of thing. And so companies use that to market their products or to drive traffic. And by traffic, I mean customers uh, to their store. And so we use that same technology to either drive donations or to drive membership or to drive volunteers. Right? So it, it's, a, it's an effective way of putting your information out there without having to put people on the phone or not know that people want to call you back. And because of analytics, we get a chance to see whether or not people have actually opened that glass. Okay. So we'll know if we send out a thousand of them, we can look at our calendars or something and determine out of a thousand people how many opened it, how many didn't open it, you know, how many people forwarded to somebody else. You know, so uh, it's kind of like a now, you know, if you have a code and you sneeze in your hand, you shake somebody's hand, then they touch their nose and they get a code, they sneeze on somebody, they get a code. You know, that's how germs happen. You don't know. You don't know. So that's how germs spread from one person to another. Right? And so in a sense, you've heard about viruses on the computer, they spread from one computer to another. That, that marketing information can be used like that. They call it going viral. You know, so somebody is sending you, what's the thing out now? Have you, uh, what's the little thing on, on YouTube? They ask you, can you, they do a little dance thing. I know they like the cheese pizza thing. What's the cheese pizza video you guys always watch on YouTube? Did you all sit around, somebody sent it to you, and you sent it to somebody else? Cheese pizza. Okay. That's something, did you, did you something, 
when they ask a question, do something. Anyway, it was supposed to be pretty funny. And then you know, it went viral. You know, one person saw, or the, the guy from the school that was doing the Michael Jackson dance, you all saw that. Mm -hmm. And it even showed up on the news on the TV. Oh, yeah. It was at our school. No, this was the nah, school. No, it was a guy that was doing uh, oh, yeah. Billie Jean man. Did yeah, he was dancing with Billie Jean. So when, when information goes from, goes from one place to another, like that's called going viral, okay, which is like a virus. It moves you know, from one place to the, to the next. And so we hope that our information that we market uh, gets passed on to several people. Yes, ma'am. Uh, uh, the hours for picking it on Right, exactly. So chances are that video went viral. Okay. Everybody understand that? Viral went out something. Uh, so a couple other ways that, that, that we use technology. Um, how many of you know what human resources is? Human resources, yes sir. Human resources, those are the people that you work with or the people that other people. For the people that work with you. Okay. So a, a resource is uh, a thing of value. It, it, it is uh, so like you might go to your teacher to help you with a school problem. She's a resource. You may go to the library or to a bookstore to get uh, information to help you answer a question. So uh, human resources is the department or the function in an organization that helps you identify the talents, meaning the people that you need run your organization. So everything we do in the human resources department is on the computer. You can know what you can, but chances are we're going to tell you to go to the computer anyway. When you wanted a job, you had to put together your resume, put it in a, put a, put a cover letter with it, put it in an envelope, and mail it to a company or take it to a company. Most companies now tell you to go to their website, look to see what job they have open, and apply for the job online. Even if you go into Target stores, you can't turn in an application. You have to set a machine and fill out the application online. All right? And then that, that machine will tell you or that, uh, that company's website will send you a message saying we receive uh, your application, we will process it, and we'll be in touch with you. And so the whole human element of what was called personnel uh, no longer exists. There was a time when you can call and get a status on the job, turn to start people not. So if you don't apply online, you can't even talk about people to people on the job. Right. And then many times in large organizations like BJC, there's a job number on one of the hospitals, there's a number associated with every job. So you just can't call your friend and say, well, I applied for this uh, uh, food service job. You gotta tell them the number of the job, and what hospital it's at, you know, that kind of thing. So it's gotten a lot more complicated, but it's also a lot easier. But you could probably apply for jobs quicker now than you ever could before. So that's how people apply for employment at the club. They have to go on our website, uh, click on employment, and then fill out an application. Right? And then once somebody gets hired, we track all of their information in our electronic database. All that information is stored in our, in our personnel file. And all of our benefit information, you know, who knows what benefits are in the workplace. Yes, sir. Benefits. Makai. You had your hand up. You? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's like a bench. Something extra. Something extra. Benefits. That's right. Something extra. And in the workplace, those things that are something extra are like health insurance, dental insurance, vision program, uh, retirement program. You've heard of retirement program. You, know, that's, you put some money in, your company might match that. So you, when you retire, you have money that continues to come in. Uh, vacation, where they pay you when you're not at work. Those are all considered benefits. Those are all advantages. Okay, and that's the way that a company can use to attract you. They can pay you a salary, but they can also offer you very, very good benefits. And it varies from company to company. So we track all of our benefits online. Our payroll. Uh, we used to be able, we used to be able when you got your paycheck, your electric paycheck, your printed paycheck, you have to take that to the bank and deposit it. Most people don't do that, but they have direct deposit. So instead of me having to get my check, then drive to the bank and deposit it, our payroll company automatically puts my money into my checking account. Or it's, it's to many accounts that I want to. So I actually have money going to two accounts. Uh, 
to two different banks. So they can track that. Yeah. <laughs> Not because I had that much of money. I'm trying to hide some of the money so I won't spend it. So, uh, but that's all done electronically. You know, and then if I want to know what my paycheck was or what my uh, taxes were, I can pull up a copy of that online. And I can go back as far in history as I want to to do that. So I no longer have these piles of uh, check stubs uh, that I have to keep track of. It's all done electronically. Some people consider that an advantage. I do, but some people don't think so. Now imagine, you're on vacation in Paris over payday, and your check is sitting on your desk. And you need money so you can continue to have fun in Paris. You're out of luck, right? Yeah. All right. But we got electronic deposit, direct deposit, payday comes. So, so every every other Thursday by eight o'clock that morning, my money is in my account. Right. So I usually tell people don't cash this until Thursday. Mm. So, so that money is there. So I don't have to worry about getting back home and taking that and depositing over to the bank and school. Yes, sir. I got paid today. Oh, yeah. I'm paying you paid today, too. Are you? For babysitting. Very good. So what do you do with your money? I just pay it. Sometimes I save it, but most of my time, it don't work with me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You always may want to save some. You know, put some aside. Put some aside to spend, but you also want to save some. It's a good practice to have. Um, it's right there on the table. And print out your receiving gave it to you. So when we, this, two weeks ago, we had a golf tournament uh, to raise money for the club. And that's how we get people to pay for stuff. We don't wait for them to pass out, you know, count out cash. We don't wait for them to write out a check. They pull out their credit card. We have a square, you know, and we have data plans. So, you know, just like on your phone, you have data plans so you can access the internet and that sort of thing, right? Okay. So we have data plans on our iPads and our iPad minis. We stick a square on there. If somebody wants to pay for the golf or they want to uh, buy an auction item, we just swipe the card on site. So our office is on Grand to go here. Our golf tournament was at a place called St. Albans, which is you know, on the other side of 270, quite a distance away. Um, but we swiped that card, and right at that moment, that money was being deposited into our account. All right? So the, the benefits of you know, technology are tremendous, tremendous. Even in your school, you know how your attendance is tracked? Your teachers, you know how their, how their pay is calculated? Yes, ma'am. So if you come to the club and you swipe your card, if your mom is calling and saying you need to call home, that pops up on our screen. Uh, so your ability to communicate and transact business has become so much effective and efficient now through the use of technology. And of course it's still fun, you know, uh, I, mean, I don't know how many of you use, um, what is it called? Um, what's it, the, the, your tunnel vision thing, you, you use your uh, we. Xbox. Yeah. yeah, but you can use it to access this this TV program. Netflix. You know, when I was when I was a kid, and I don't want to date anybody else, but we had we had Channel Two, Channel Four, Channel Five, and Channel Eleven. Then I remember when Channel Thirty came on board. Well, maybe you thought it was something. You know, you had to have a different antenna to do that. Uh, we had Channel Nine. There weren't many channels. As a matter of fact, you had to get up and turn. And I remember when remote controls first came out. You know, so those were big deals. You know, most of our, I think, I think we had one a small color TV. Most of our TVs were black and white. And I'm, I'm old, but I'm not that old. I mean, so some of the stuff that's happening now is brand new. When I bought my first big screen TV, it was about 45 inches this way. Guess how big it was this way? It was like 56 inches, so it took two people to carry that. Now you get a 60-inch TV, and the only reason you need somebody else to help you is because it's so long. But it's flat. That kind of technology was not around before. I used to be able to fix my own car, change my oil, uh, tune it up. I can't, I can't even get to the uh, oil filter anymore to do that. It's all computerized. On my car now, if one of my tires is too low on air, my car tells me. 
It's a 2008 uh, Saturn out, so it's not that new of a car. So it's time for all change and all that kind of stuff. So, and you know, we, we all have these uh, uh, things that tell you your direction. Now. Uh, yeah. 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 When those first came on the car, it scared the life out of you. know, somebody didn't tell you where you were. Uh, but that's common information now. It's on your phone. Uh, we drove to Denver. Colorado, Steamboat Springs, Colorado, a couple years ago. And you call AAA and Don, I can go with our church on this, and they give you a tick trip. Basically, they take a map and they take a highlighter and they'll outline your trip. So while you're driving, somebody's got to sit there and tell you where to turn. Can you imagine that today? Yeah. So now you plug it in on your Waze or you know, some other you know, Google Maps, and then there's a voice that comes on and tells you when to turn. Right. That's true. Keep in mind, though, that so so the benefits of technology uh, don't come without some you know, issues. So you do have to be careful uh, because of technology with credit cards and things like that. It's a lot easier for people to get information about you. Uh, my wife's uh, bank account just got attacked again. I think they some people stole information from folks who had. Uh, made purchases at one of the restaurants, you know, so they got a hold of her uh, account number and they did some transactions against her account. Now, she's not going to be held accountable for but I think one of the transactions may have been as much as $5,000. So, you know, there's some benefits to it, but there are also some things to be concerned about. Yes, sir? Why doesn't she get a life lock? That's a good question. She might get it now. So, and then you have to determine if something like life lock, is it really what they purported to be? Yeah, I mean, so, I mean, people that still write checks and people that still use cash don't have that problem. So that's that's the other option. Yes. Usually they will. But you need to call them right away. So fortunately, she checks her account. Unlike some people we know, she checks her account on a regular basis. So she knows when this stuff is going on. It's happening to her. So maybe it's like my thing. You have to be careful, even when you're using your computer, when you're on Facebook, uh, things like that. You have to be careful the kind of information you put out there. Right? Real careful. You have to be careful about the kinds of pictures you put out there. What Nick talked about my youngest daughter when she was interviewing for a job at Enterprise Rental Car. She shut down her Facebook page because you know, she didn't want her friends posting stuff there that may not have made her look good. You know, because companies now will go online to look up stuff about you. I can take any of your names and type it in Google, do a Google search and see what it brings up about you. And in a lot of these instances, even though the students may have been in college at the time or high school, you know, they have pictures of themselves at parties, drinking, and doing kind of stuff that, that doesn't positively reflect on you. It may not be a true picture of who you are. Uh, but once I see that information, I'm going to make some determination about you and your character. That's why you have to be very careful about the kinds of that you put out there. So technology can be great, uh, but it has to be used responsibly to make your life better. Yes, ma'am. Um, my mom said that, uh, because I'm going to Metro next year, mm -hmm. and she was like, I got to shut my face down, because she said, even though that I don't be having nothing on my phone with her, she said she was damn just like, just in case something do happen, and you don't know what like high school do, because high school you go on the online and stuff, and 
Let's give it up for Mr. Fowler. <laughs> 